Well, hello everybody. Um, I've got to apologise for some technical difficulties yet again. <laughs> and, uh, and what we're what we're doing with this show, we're, we're we couldn't log on to Twitch with Zoom, and so we're doing a recording that will be put up to YouTube. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's following us. The the show will go on, but we've just hit another uh, uh, set of technical difficulties here. So um, I will get the screen share up and I just want to show uh, everyone, first of all, where Right, this first of all is our website and as you can see, if you look down here we now have three shows a week, hopefully. <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> these things are sent to triers. The, this, today's show is the one that goes up on YouTube, right? Tomorrow's show will not go up on YouTube, and uh, it's on Opening Insights and, and the London system. Uh, the Wednesday show will be on Great Games. So we're on to three shows a week. We, we just have to sort out this new set of technical difficulties, which I'm sure we will be able to manage. Well, I'll be able to manage because I am the, <laughs> the, the technical executive here who's, who's causing all these problems. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to write in and blame anyone, blame me. <laughs> Choosing chess games is much easier, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we, we did have... A, um, some readers questions in and uh, the the first one was from matthew uh and he was asking about a particular variation of the the, the caracan now i'm gonna i'm gonna let andrew uh cover this one because he's got some experience with this line uh i'm just a newbie to to this stuff but matthew asked about this particular variation and then the next one uh, we've got uh, what Andrew thinks is the, the greatest ever King's Indian game. I didn't say that. And you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 think, I, I think black was supposed to win. Oh, you've got to specify <laughs> if you want white or black to win. We can't have that. It's the King's Indian getting duffed up by a, a, an Italian taxi driver, as we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, over, over to you, Andrew. I'm going to I'm going to interject at some uh, at some moments, probably. I can't actually move the pieces right now because you're sharing your full screen. Yeah. Uh, you you should be able to move them. There we go. Ah, uh, okay. Fine. Should be able I to can't... move them on on Lee Chess. I, I can't questions. actually move them because your screen is dominating my screen. Uh, well, you've got to, that's your, your, that's your settings. You've got to go up to your Zoom settings. Yes, and exit full screen. Here we are. Excellent. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a good job we know what we're doing on this show. That's all oh, right. it's a good job we got, you know, we, 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 we can keep calm under pressure. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's, that's <laughs> centuries of experience. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So, Matthew asked um, about a line in the Caro Can, which is actually very interesting. Um, I'm not totally sure it's 100% sound, but uh, it's an idea of Boris Spassky. And um, as we know, the Caro Can is um, a very difficult opening to uh, play against because it's so solid. And Spassky's idea is uh, contained in the advanced variation, which, of course, is very popular these days. Uh, I had a long period when it went out of fashion. Um, since the days of Capablanca, you know, Black was just getting a good game very easily. And um, it's come back into fashion a lot recently. Uh, many, many strong players playing it. Many different new ideas. Um, Bishop F5 is one of the main lines. I guess the other most common move, uh, which is played here, is C5. Uh, I don't have anything to to show against that because that's not what we're going to discuss now. Bishop f5 and now Spassky's moved knight to e2. And uh, I first saw Spassky play this. I was so impressed with it, so um, taken by White's idea that I decided to uh, look a bit more closely at it. And I still play it today on the internet and virtually win 100% of games with it. 
because in this position, Black almost always goes H6, which I think Karakam players are uh, kind of programmed to do. Um, and then Spassky's idea is to go H5, Bishop H7, Bishop D3, and when Black takes it, we capture with the pawn. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had this in games on the internet. You know, people just walk into this with uh, almost no idea of what White is intending to do. And uh, I recorded something on this in an old video, Foxy Openings video called 21st Century Secret Weapons, I think it was called. And um, this position can be incredibly effective for White if Black doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, right, the first thing I, to... Hmm? Can I just briefly interject and say yeah. that this is another... We, we mentioned super court grip in some of the shows with the pawns on e5 and h5. And White has achieved that because Black played h6 when he should have played h5. And uh, so that, that is basically what we've got. So if Black doesn't get some serious counterplay in a position like this, he's likely to be squeezed on the king side with f4, f5 coming. Well, that's not only a squeeze, that's a demolition job. And, uh, you know, the number of games I've won simply by executing that plan is, is, is uh, beyond belief. And it's very difficult for Black this position to play, I think, over the board, particularly if you're surprised. Um, a lot of Black players play C5, where we just take that. This doesn't really interfere with, uh, with the White plan at all. It might, it might even help it. Um, one of the main ideas is to put the Queen out on G4. And already you can see that's causing Black some difficulty. And if this is coupled with Bishop E3, Castles, F4, and then F5, White can just get a, um, a strong attack automatically. Doesn't even need to think too much. So what I would say you need to do, if you are keen on this line, you want to play it. Of course, Black doesn't need to play C5. Um, is to take a look at Spassky's games in this variation. And um, there you will see how White can generate a big attack from what is a peculiar looking position. It looks as though it should be easy for Black to go after White's weak pawns, but uh, they're not that weak. And in fact, the pawn on D3 controls important central squares. Now, of course, there's no reason why Black should walk into that variation at all. So just going back all the way to here. Um, yeah, e6, knight to g3. Now, not many black players do this, but I think actually quite a good move here is just to go knight to e7 and allow white to take the bishop. I mean, hardly anybody does this. I first saw this, I think, in a game of Vlastimil Hort, uh, again, when he was a young, young player. And um, yes, white can take the bishop. Black takes back. And it's a completely different type of game to the, the one that uh, went before. What do you think of this position, Nigel? I think it's roughly level, wouldn't you say? <sighs> well, White's got two bishops there. Uh, yeah, I, I would definitely prefer White. He's got space and two bishops. Yeah, I guess so. Um, is this so bad? Looks like a decent French. Bishop d3. Yeah, and just let him take it, I guess. Yeah, bishop takes f5, ef, maybe dc. Castle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. It's not, is it so bad? <sighs> well, maybe not. I mean, I, 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 can't say I'm, I can't say I'm massively fond of it. Pawn on e5 is... Yeah, that, that, that is a problem now, actually. Yeah, White's way behind yeah, him. Maybe, well. maybe I should uh, not take on c5. Well, uh, I guess I if am... you don't take on c5, Black's going to take on d4 and play queen b6. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, we'll castle and then cd, cd, queen b6, knight c3. Yeah. And I am, I am suspicious of Black's position here. I have to say, because yeah. I'm, I'm I'm worried about the uh, the weakness of d5, and uh, and the the earlier one, um, I'm I'm bothered by the two bishops. Yeah, probably what well, bishop e3. You let me take on b2. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
yeah. what's the point? You become you become affected by modern chess far too much. <laughs> well, if, if, if that was the case, I'd be going to the poor here. Willy nilly. <laughs> and, uh... Uh, Queen D3. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that <laughs> looks pretty dodgy somehow. I don't know why, but uh, I don't know, maybe this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, am I am I trapping your queen in a sack? Uh, Probably, if I let you. Yeah, knight uh, knight b five. Well, it's just a game. <laughs> it's just a game. <laughs> you heard it here first and last. No, but I think knight knight e seven is a move, but then nobody does that in practice. Very few people do that in practice. They just retreat the bishop h four, and now. Uh, I think we come to the point of Matthew's question. He was asking what uh, black should do to to play against this variation. And I think h5 is probably the best reply. Um, but that's contrary to a lot of uh, ideas in the Karakam where black is not advised to play h5. For instance, if we go back to the start, to this position, and just compare this uh, in the Capablanca variation um, here... Uh, now here, Black is most definitely not advised to play h5, although it didn't stop Larson from playing it a few times. Um, <clears throat> why would that be, Nigel? Why why would you say h5 is is not a great move here? Uh, well, knight h3 or knight one to e2, and uh, intending knight f4. Yeah, that that already points the finger at Black's um, Black. I, I like that because it doesn't obst obstruct the bishop. Yeah, we've got to play. Yeah, it's five. already it's already looking pretty grim. <laughs> is is e five necessary here? I mean, if it is, then that is uh, definitely not. <laughs> well, we're producing some very original analysis this morning. It's pretty good that. for a, a Monday morning. <laughs> we're bad. punch drunk after the technical difficulties. Yeah, queen queen takes d one check knight d seven. I don't know. <laughs> This is what is known in England as a punt. <laughs> and that's your Welsh. Got, got, what is punt in Welsh? You know, you're, uh, you're Welsh, aren't you? you, know, so you well, you not, know. not really, but... I go there. <laughs> I'm parked with Wales now. I oh, yeah. H6. There we go. Yeah. Controlling the F5 square. Castles. Distinctly, castles distinctly dubious. Well, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does, it does look very dubious. Well, well anyway, the point is that all sorts 99 uh, Caro Chem players out of 100 will play H6 in that position. So, um, in, in fact, 99.99. .99. So, uh, we get this line here. Now we get H5. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the question remains as to how our black is going to, our white is going to deal with this move. Um Black's just going to develop his pieces. I mean, he's probably just thinking about c5 already, isn't he? And the knight on g3 uh, is, is not that well placed um, when white can't get f4, f5 in. Um, in fact, if black could play a move like bishop e7 here and take the pawn on h4, then uh, again, white's got to be white's got to be aware that that, that possibility exists. Now, this brings me to another game of Spassky against Mickey Adams, which was played in 1989 back in Cannes. And um, especially, I think, in one game, played Bishop E2 here, going after the H-pawn. The H-pawns are mutually weak. I mean, that, that is definitely a move, but I don't think it leads to anything really special for white after C5, because black's already countering in the centre. Um, I'm not sure this is leading to anything special for White. What do you think, Nigel? Well, I can guess and say no. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it would need it would need a bit of time to to figure it out because it's quite a rich position, obviously. Yes. You know, so uh, I'll say, yeah, it look, looks looks reasonable. You know, black pieces are, are working. Knight can come to e7. Other knight can come to c6. Queen can come no, to b6. No, no bad pieces. So. Uh, yeah, it looks reasonable. So Spassky in this game against Mickey Adams came up with an uh, interesting idea. He played Bishop D3 anyway. And when Mickey took, 
he took back with the pawn in the same style as the other variation. Now, uh, this is obviously leading to a, a Caro Can, like, um, you know, a, a very unfamiliar situation in the Caro Can. Uh, why it's got the, the central pawns? Uh, are they weak or do they simply control all the squares in the centre? And has black got to worry about knight takes h5 now? Uh, probably not, because he can answer that with a move like g6. Or maybe he can't actually. Bishop g5. What is going on there? Well, in Spassky versus Adams, black played queen to b6, which looks very, very... Um, appropriate and that encouraged Spassky to retreat his knight to e2 and that really is a recognition that the knight on g3 isn't doing anything much now let's just take a look at uh, knight takes h5 do we just go what do we do here Nigel we just take on d4 don't we I would have thought so yeah yeah and now black central pressure is considerable yeah the uh, uh, I mean the well black Black is near to getting his... Um, the, there's no obvious problem with the rest of his development. And if the knight goes back to g3, he can take on h4. Um, well, he can take on e5. That's the problem, isn't it? take on e5 as well. I think white centre's collapsing there. Yeah, I think so. So that's definitely not what Spassky wants. So he retreats his knight to e2. And you'd think, you'd think this was awful for white. But... Um, it's not quite so clear. It's not quite so clear. Um, Black has got to... I mean, if he's going to leave the white pawns as they are, he's got to find a way of developing his pieces. I mean, in, in the end, that means you don't play with c5. But if you don't play with c5 in a position like this, how are you going to free your game? Uh, it's, not, it's not at all a, an easy situation to evaluate. Well, one of the one of the things about the double D pawns is even if Black undermines one of the pawns with uh, with C five, then Black can take, White can take, and then play D four. So he's well, got that reserve it. central pawn to to maintain his uh, his wedge, which I think is useful. Well, Mickey played here. I mean, he's clearly trying to do without C five for the time being, and Spassky just manoeuvred his knight across to F three. And now we reach, uh, you know, another critical situation. Should Black play c5 or not? If he doesn't, where is he going to put his bishop on um, f8? Where is he going to put his knight on d7? Uh, so, sorry, on b8, because ideally that knight would like to come to c6. So weighing everything up, Adams plays c5. Would you have done that? I don't know. I mean, I think... I think Black's pieces are good enough to be able to play C5 here and not worry too much about yeah, taking put his knight on Put his knight on C6. I mean, the problem for Black is, positionally speaking, if he gives a check, let's say, and White blocks with the bishop, if, if he trades bishops, then, you know, White might be threatening a move uh, like Queen G5 in, in good time. And, and Black doesn't have a great deal of play here. Yeah, the, uh, the Black's dark square bishop is, is useful re for repelling borders on the king side, I would have thought. Well, it's also a good bishop in, in comparison with White's bishop, isn't it? So you can see, because the central pawns are fixed on, fixed on the same colour squares as the White bishop. So you can see why he doesn't do that. Uh, C5 was played, of course, he does take, and now we get this, this idea mentioned by Nigel earlier. Um, and now if he goes back again, he can give a check, but... Um, I would say that improves White's position slightly because the bishop, the dark square bishop, isn't that great. And, um, well, what's black to yeah, play here? Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And the, um, it, it's going to be quite difficult finding a long-term home for black king, Black's king because he, he doesn't really want to go king side, uh, not with that pawn on h5. We've got an open c file. Uh, so there's some, you know, the, 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 the queen side is not looking incredibly safe. Now, in the short term, certainly could leave his king on e8. But you, you have to wonder if it's going to be safe there, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the long run. 
Yes, I mean, I guess Black is probably going to have to cast on the queen side here, isn't he? Just play King B8 and all that sort of stuff. Very yeah, slow. Rook C8, yeah. Slow stuff. Yeah. That should be okay for him in general. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, it. yeah. But I, I, I would have thought White is better there. Now, I like Bishop B7 a lot more. Well, Spassky is insistent. Um. Of course, that does leave B2 hanging, but uh, I guess he's sacrificing the pawn deliberately. Um, Rook B1, I suppose, and then Rook takes B7. Um, Adams gives us a check, and now Spassky played King F1. So he doesn't he doesn't do Bishop D2, which would be... Uh, would that be like a free move? Well, it yeah. would, but I guess Bishop, Bishop on G5 is useful because it prevents Black from casting yeah. Queenside. It, it sort of indicates that Bishop B4 check on the previous move might have been met by King F1. I think he's going to go G3 and King G2, isn't he? And then uh, yeah. I, 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 I somehow I slightly think. prefer White now. I don't know what you feel. I, I think no, I, I like White as well. But I'm a I'm a big fan of these pawn wedges. Uh, they well, certainly I, give I, you more I just, space, don't they? Yeah. Well, Knight C6, normal chess G3, as indicated. Bishop comes back, takes, takes. <laughs> Queen D two. Well, I think Black's played this fairly efficiently. I think White might have a tiny edge here, but where are the weaknesses in Black's position to attack? Um, G seven might be considered weak. Maybe the whole king side could be considered weak, especially if Black casts on the queen side. But then again, White's position is also a little bit fragile. Um, yeah, no, there's 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 probably like some knight G five if. Uh... You know, somewhere if black goes goes queenside, that's that's something you're going to have to watch out for. Well, he did, yeah. And I think white white's probably got to safety his king here. Well, he didn't. He play rook c1. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking he may have to may play that, but rook c1, rook c1 is almost going to be it's all certainly going to be answered by king b8, isn't it? Yeah. What about what about knight g5 there? Would that be met by rook d f8? Well, he can't leave it to be taken. That's absolutely certain. So, uh, yeah, I think I think Rook D F eight, and then King G two, Knight F five, G two. Yeah, we come and attack the pawn. Yeah, Knight F five. It, it it doesn't look like anything um, very special for White. I mean, maybe maybe you can play Rook D one, and you know, and the game continues with Black having his Rook slightly tied up at the moment. Well, I guess Black plays a move like that, though. Yeah. Eventually he'll come to play F6, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. It's quite complicated. I'm not sure I like that rook on F8 being jammed up like that, but maybe he can play knight D8 and F6. I don't know. Because what is white doing there? Yeah, yeah, possibly. I mean, but but you know, then then white comes to the the C file, rook A C one, F six, knight back to F three, uh, wanting knight to F four probably. Uh, so rook C five, C five, yeah. And then you just double up rooks, right? Well, then that may lose to rook D C one. Yeah. It just shows you how quickly uh, this can go awry. Well, I've got to go A6, haven't I? Can I survive that? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, it doesn't look very nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very grandmasterly statement. <laughs> I hope that the audience <laughs> believe you. <laughs> well, they they have to believe it doesn't look very nice, you know. Well, I believe I believe that Larson's famous saying "long variation, wrong variation" is probably applicable there. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there we are. So this is the game, and now King G two, a stable move. And uh, well, uh, the problem with this position from Black's perspective is how is he going to win? It's not easy. I mean, I don't think Black can feel too unhappy. I think, I think he's almost equalised, wouldn't you say? Just about. Faint edge to white. I, I still yeah. prefer white. I still like yeah. white. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess Mickey could just go rook c8 and, and play neutralising chess, eh? Knight well, g5 maybe, is a problem, maybe, isn't but it? there's all, you know, the... Uh, I mean, we, we, we see in the game how he handles knight g5 and knight f4. But I'm, I'm, I'm unconvinced this is very comfortable for black. Right? And he, he may, you know... It's quite an interesting line. Quite an interesting line for white. It is. So it's, certainly, it's certainly designed to catch your opponent on the nose. <laughs> shows, shows again the advantage of the French. That <laughs> <laughs> so you you you've got c five in one move. The so called bad bishop might even be good. Yeah, well, I'm very skeptical about bad bishops. I mean, I I, I think you know a, a bishops. Uh, right, there was also a bc there, I suppose. But now this is another interesting moment there. in the game because um, White is allowed to take on h five, and he does. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, it, I mean, it, I look at that. It's hard to see what Black's going to do. I mean, I know that I know that Mickey played uh, knight g six here. Yeah. Maybe White's pieces are in a bit of a tangle. Of course, that does attack the pawn on e five, which White defends, and now he plays d four. And I think he's going to put his queen on the White square di long diagonal, isn't he? I think that's the intention. Yeah. Is that enough for a pawn? Well, it looks it looks pretty dangerous for black, I would say. You know. <laughs> Can you well, say? <laughs> there we are. And it was now he goes G five and gets play that way. Yeah. Takes and then D three. I mean was Queen D three better than uh than Queen E2. Now, how uh, how can he... Is it, is it Knight E3 check here? I think that's the reason, isn't it? Oh, right. Okay. I think, I think well, that... I, uh, I, I, okay. Yeah, I that, that's, that's, a good, uh, that's a good... I, I did wonder that when, I, when, you just, when you just said it, but then... Yeah, I think that's the reason. Yeah, okay. And now this amazing move, G5. Yeah. Um, excellent move, I think. Excellent move. Well, it looks yeah. to me. My my first instinct would be that that Mickey, you know, managed to create counterplay from a position which was starting to creak a bit, you know, strategically. He wants to put his rook on h eight, doesn't he? At some point. Yeah. Well, he goes h g d three. Yeah. Takes and then knight d four. Yeah. Very nice. And and used to. Uh, this is going to lead to a draw, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it kind of looks like the draw was, was you know, a bit of a scramble in this game. No, I agree. I agree. That's probably the reason uh, I showed it. Black was always scrambling. And now, of course, uh, White's got to take that knight because Black's attacking the knight on F3 three times. Yeah. And then in comes the queen. And now we see the point of G5 because White cannot go king uh, to G1 because of rook here. Yeah which is completely uh, uh, terminal. So um, he's got to go King F1. And now it's just a question of whether Black's got anything better than a draw here. Um, so Rook, Rook over, does he just play King E1 and walk away? I think he does. Uh, well, the game is agreed to draw, H8. yes. Yeah, now, so um, rook, rook H8 instead of the, uh, the Queen check on H1. Then... Then you just go king e1. Here you mean? Yeah. And head for the hills. You've got to do that. And now I don't think there's anything there. Yeah. Just go back to the game. Um, right. So if I go, if I, I've got to go king. If I go king f1, right? Yeah, then it's a then it's a draw, and if you go king e one, sorry, what what what's he doing? Uh, what, what am I doing after this? King e one again. Yeah, king e one. Right, I get well, it. I'm, I'm just wondering after queen f three check. Yeah, can he go king e one straight away. King e one. 
rook f5 can't be played. Queen d8 mate. So we can't move our rook off the back rank. Well, let's try rook h8 again. Yeah, that's a, a tempo down compared with the... Uh, it is. It is a tempo down. Line, isn't it? Yeah. So... Wait, so white's a bit tied up though, isn't he? Yes. Or can we just run away like that? Well, uh, yeah. Maybe. King c8. Yeah. Well, it, it it's um, it is an interesting game. I mean, I, I'm I'm not sure it truly answers the uh, you know the, the the question about what to do about this h4 and knight e2 line because that you know it it looks pretty interesting for white. I have to say. Well, it's it's certainly more than interesting if if black allows uh, eight, if black allows the line with h6 h5. Yeah. Maybe he needs to look again at the the ninety seven line you suggested, and I, I think there was like a mass migration by Caracan players to three c five at one point as well. Yeah, but I don't think it was because of this. <laughs> <laughs> then that was more the short variation, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah also yeah. causing them a lot of problems. But the, there is an issue with the Caro that you you lose a tempo when you get your natural counterplay with c five in several lines, also the little centres that you're losing a tempo. And I am sceptical about bad bishops ever being really bad. So I, I just see the French as being, uh, a, I know Caracan players are going to be writing in in horror at what I'm saying here, but I, I just think the French is a bit better. We are trying to encourage interaction with our... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Caro, bad, French, good. <laughs> just to, just to summarise um, for Matthew... Um, I don't think we've come up with a, a clear answer to your question because um, even after H5, it appears that White can muddy the waters by allowing this double pawn couple in the centre. Uh, it does. It looks ugly, but the advantages are quite clear. White is maintaining a central pawn uh, uh, majority, and there's always a spectre of F4, F5 in the wings if if Black goes wrong. Um, all the same, I can understand why players might not like this position with White. But uh, you just have to recall what happened in Spassky Adams. I mean, there's a bit of patient play by, um, by White, just maintaining his centre. And now we get this position where, unless Black plays C5, how does he free his game? And if he doesn't free his game, White can, you know, carry on with moves like G3, King over to G2, A3, maybe B4, and, and gain a bit of space. So... Quite an interesting line and um, a very good line for club players to adopt because I don't think the idea is that complicated, are they? No. So that, that I hope, um, goes some way to answering the question, but perhaps it's not a full answer. Yeah, better to stick with the French. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get this board structure in any line of the French, that's for sure. Let, let's go on to the, the best ever Kings Indian game. I think it was. Uh, I, I think what was wanted was a was a win for Black. <laughs> this was um, this was uh, uh, asked question. by Kevin. 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 Yeah, very, very keen, I'm sure we both know Kevin. <laughs> a keen, uh, a keen uh, supporter of the show, but he yeah. knew that he knew, he would have known this was an impossible question. What is the best ever Kings Indian game? <laughs> I think he just yeah. wanted us to take a view. Well, anyone, there, there you go. <laughs> so I took a, I took an extreme view. He chose the game. <laughs> Have the Kings Indian smash flat. Well, well okay. <laughs> <laughs> to introduce the the protagonist in this encounter, we have White is uh, Sergio Mariotti, uh, who is the first Italian grandmaster, and he, he I, I believe he drove a taxi in Rome. That's what he's he a brilliant attacking player, Nigel. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, you know, I, I think he was like semi-professional, you know, amateur. But taxi driver is a pretty good profession for, you know, on the side for chess players. I think Rosalimo did that as well. Rosalimo was a taxi driver in New York. Yeah, Actually, but... before you go on, can I just take that move back for a sec? He, Mariotti specialised in a, a, very, a variation of the uh, by, by Lopez, which I again included on this. <coughs> 21st century secret weapons video where black plays queen f6 he loved this line <coughs> isn't that and this supposed is a, to be bad because of d4 yeah but not many people play d4 okay and even if they do you know there, there are some complications there but if they don't 
if they don't, Black can get a, a, a vicious king side attack going. Um, what you've got to remember is as soon as he moves his deep one up, you probably need to play h6 in order to stop bishop g5. And then if white goes through with typical Ray Lopez manoeuvres, uh, I don't know, something like this, then black can often get a very big king side attack with the help of moves like knight f4 and bishop g4. And um, so that was just an aside. That's another easy to remember blitz weapon for you. There you go. And um, now we'll move on. That was another one of Mariotti's uh, <laughs> favourite variations. The taxi right. driver's attack. <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to be seeing more of Mariotti. <laughs> <laughs> what was the best ever Queen's Gambit decline game? Here's a Mariotti had, game. <laughs> he had that Nigel Davis I, in the back of his I town. just so happened to have a Mariotti game which answers this question. <laughs> Anyway, so we have a regular King's Indian. Now, uh, uh, Svetsova Gligoric playing black, he was the uh, uh, leading Yugoslav Grandmaster for many years. And, uh, you know, not, I don't think he really ever threatened the, the world title, but he was a, you know, very serious candidate. Mm -hmm. And uh, he played the King's Indian, right? He had a, a a fairly narrow opening repertoire. He played the Ray Lopez with black, the Brea variation, King's Indian, and with white, D4 followed by C4. One of the greatest King's Indian players, actually. Yeah, but just not in this game. So <laughs> well, You couldn't have imagined the rough treatment he was going to uh, be encountered to. I think, I think <laughs> Kevin was probably looking more for like, like <coughs> Petrosian Gligoric with black winning. No, we like, can't have that. Uh -huh. This is a game not to be missed. <laughs> I thought we were pro Kings Indian in this show. <laughs> uh, so c5, d5, castles, bishop e2. And this has got the uh it it looks like a you know just a transpositional move, but there is an evil point to it that when black plays e6, white now goes d takes e6, f takes e6, g4. Now I, I have to say, Andrew, that uh, I confess that before putting this game up, I uh, had it annotated by Stockfish 14 on my computer. <laughs> and so this is where some of these notes are going to come from. Stockfish 14 does not think an awful lot of G4. And the reason is that after knight <laughs> E4, H5... Oh, the six boards <laughs> attack. <laughs> Well, I think this is very modern of us, actually, you know, because G4 and H4 have become all the rage in, uh, in today's chess. I can you tell know. you what, this is frightening stuff to have to face at the board for a lot of players. <laughs> this, you know, you know your opponent, you know your opponent you're... doesn't really care. You know, he's going for it. He wants to blow you <laughs> completely into the next universe. And he doesn't, yeah. doesn't care if he loses. Yeah, and if, if he does lose, he just goes back to driving his taxi. You know, whereas, well, he you know, says, you know, I, I you just played garbage or to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is good fun. Okay. Well, the, the answer to this, which uh, actually Stockfish supports as well, and it's notes, is B5. And I, I think this was played later. Uh, I forget who the players were, but I, I remember seeing that B5 was the, the improvement giving for black, which shows an incredibly... An incredibly cold-blooded approach, especially when you consider that now Stockfish's top move is Bishop B7. <laughs> <laughs> just allowing White to take on H7 because the, the H pawn will be a good defender. You just go King H8. And then White center implodes. But, you know, sitting there with your, your, your King on H8, you know, so if we have, say we have this and he goes King H8, you know, this position is really not for everybody. So anyway, uh, you'd think it would suit. You'd think it would suit Kings Indian players. They're a pretty fearless bunch. <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Kings Indian, but I want I want to be safe. You know, you want it to be more like the Queen's Gambit decline. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But it's, it's never going to be where, like where you do all the attacking on the king side and and why and lose. Yeah, why <laughs> doesn't do anything to you? So, question mark. That's bad, isn't it? To give that beautiful move a question mark. Yeah, well, it's just it's just Stockfish says now it's plus one point three seven, you know, thirty two ply. Whatever.
So D5, E5, Knight E4, HG, HG, Queen D3, which uh, Stockfish says is just wrong. Why? And reduces White's advantage. And that the best move is Bishop D3. Well, okay, we'll go with Queen D3. And well, you can, see, you can see why he does that. <laughs> it's not difficult. Queen H3, <laughs> and then let's go. Let's go to San Francisco. Yeah, well, Knight takes E4, Pawn takes, Queen takes. You know, yeah. Just, you know, just be like winning for White, a completely dominant position. So, so here, Black should play Bishop D7, it seems. But he now plays B5. Bishop D7. Bishop D7. That, that's a difficult move to find. Well, it's very calm, isn't it? I mean, I yeah. think the idea is that if White takes twice on E4, there's Bishop C6 skewering the Queen against the Rook on H1. Do you want to show that? Well, I could do. It's very we, complicated. We, we do want to help the, the viewers extend their vision here. Knight takes, Pawn takes, Queen takes. Bishop C6. And then it's good night Vienna to the rook. Queen takes g6, bishop takes h1. Bishop d3, what's happening? <laughs> well, the king gets out, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> well, I would have thought so. Queen takes g6. Another grand masterly judgment. <laughs> bishop, <laughs> bishop d3. Uh, can I do knight f5. No. Knight f5, there we go. No, it's no simple. good. Queen takes e6. The simple solution. Queen e6 check. There's nothing simple about this. Oh, queen e6. You can do the queen e6 check. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, Rook f5 might be fun. Yeah, just a second. We've got queen h4 check. I was waiting wait to see how long it would take you to see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, that seems to, yeah, that, that seems that, to finish me off in yeah. a big way. <laughs> yep, that so, dulls your attacking ability. I should have to resign that one. Sorry about that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the move of the game was queen d3, pawn to b5. That's an incredible position, isn't it? <laughs> Knight takes e4, b takes c4. That. Right, and uh, now white goes queen h3, of course. Black takes on e4, and white does this check. King here, pawn to f5. <laughs> Right, well, this <laughs> stockfish adorns this move with an x lamb. Right, now, <laughs> they have to say, pretty good for a humanoid. I think most people would play that move, Nigel. What, what else has White got left? I was, I was thinking about recapturing that pawn on c4. Well, I suppose it's nice c2 check, isn't it? Uh, anyway, <laughs> e takes f5, and this allows the, the bishop on e2 <clears throat> to come into the game as an opportune moment. Rook h6. <laughs> Apparently this is just winning for white, a winning attack. Right. You know, who would who would know? Knight c2 check. King f1. Pretty rough treatment for Gligorich, isn't it? <sighs> Where, was the game played? Huh? Where was the game played? Was it like Rome? Uh, Rome? I think it was played in Priya de, de Rocha. Is that, which country is that in? Portugal, uh, I think. Portugal, okay. <laughs> I'll have to look it well, up. At, at least it wasn't in front of his home crowd. You know, that would have been very, uh, very embarrassing. You know, Belgrade. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll just have to take a look. One, one second, please. F I takes I G4, right. Well, he's, he's planning a cunning discovered check with his king now. Yeah. So... Mariotti calmly gets his king out the way. And now the, the best try was queen d5. When white goes, queen takes g6 check. King f8, queen h7 check, king here, rook d6. Incredible move. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible move. <laughs> We, we, I think we, we, we have to change jobs at some time. We'll put you in charge of the technical stuff and I can do the content. <laughs> if we ever get a show, it'd be really boring. <laughs> Knight E1 check. <laughs> Strange freak comes to town. King H1. Look at that. Knight D3. 
but, so, but that's a well placed knight. But sadly, there's a lot of stuff going on here elsewhere. Queen eight seven two king. Bishop e three. Just getting the other rook into play. Uh, <coughs> this guy on a one. Queen e seven. Rook f one. Check. Of course. <laughs> king e eight. Queen g six. The first move I understand really. Rook f seven. Queen c six. Check. Oh dear. All right. King queen d seven. Rook e six. Check. Beautiful. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> so king king d8 bishop g5 check <laughs> right and i understand that move as well we take look a at that right and uh okay now he takes queen takes check king g8 He's back, back in his favorite square <laughs> Rook d6 queen b7 Rook takes f7 king takes bishop takes c4 check King e8, bishop d5. Queen e7, queen c6, check. King here. He takes material. Yeah, greed is good. Uh, queen h4, check. King g2. And <clears throat> so at this point, the, the verdict of stockfish is, well, humanoids, white loses 0.1 pawns per move. One mistake, two inaccuracies. Black loses 0.37 pawns per move. One blunder, three mistakes, one inaccuracy. That's a hell of a lot of pawns to lose per move, isn't it? <laughs> Zero point three seven four. It sort of gives you the impression that when we play chess, we're just sinking. You know, every three moves, he's chucking away a pawn. <laughs> I think it probably divides up, it divvies up the the final advantage between the <laughs> moves. I think that's one of the greatest Kings Indian games ever played. I think he wanted the black win for sheer impact. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Kevin, if you, want, if you want a black win, write in and complain. Right? Don't complain about the, the technical problems. Black, black was completely <laughs> back in there. We want, we want, we want Petrosian Gligorich. <laughs> a special request from your co presenter as well. Well, that was another annihilation, wasn't it? Where black won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sick is Queen or H1. Then we'll have, we'll have Petrosian fans writing in as well. <laughs> Can't Everybody will have their own favourites. Petrosian Pacman. Right, the queen queen sack. I moved too late. How about that one? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Oh well, okay. that was good. That was good. I right. enjoyed that. Okay, who who's guiding us through? Shall I start off on the next game? Yeah, why don't right. you? We. Uh, I think I think we're running out of time a bit here for an hour show. Well, it's great games like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll start off with this one. So here we've got this. This was a fantastic game. I didn't know it even existed. Well, I've got a. I've got a. Yes, it's, um, a, this guy asked about this. This vulgar gambit. Um, I think that's this is the original vulgar gambit coming up, and he didn't give a name, unfortunately. But um, please try and give your name when you're asking questions. It would be really helpful. Yes, right. here we are. So, so, so the the Benko gambit is CB born to A six. Right. Now, this is the old Bulgar Gambit, which tries to uh, lure a white centre pawn away, the, the, the C pawn, and then attack the centre with E6. White goes here, and black takes, and white takes, and black goes here. And I think this is a very good move, E4, because he's holding the centre, offering a pawn sack, which looks very dangerous to take because it opens the E file. I think if he takes the pawn, white goes bishop c4, and black's already in a spot of bother, isn't he? Probably bishop c4, knight f3, castles. Looks yeah, you, you just get murdered. I would have thought so. So he goes a6, which uh, looks like it develops kind of slowly. Bishop coming to c4. I mean, I, I already hate black's position, to be honest. I think there's... Uh, Bishop d6, knight f3, very simple chess. I think this is um, this opening is a product of the, the the age we live in where there's a lot of quick play tournaments and, and black players are looking for weapons to play, something unusual, something that will catch the opponent off guard. But over the board or when you're given time to consider it, it actually turns out to be unsound. I mean, the, the way white plays is just very convincing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Okay, so now knight takes e4. Well, that looks that looks oh, suicidal. That's a, a pawn down, you know. 
Bishop G5. <laughs> I know, but you know, the, pro probably the best. Well, the, uh, knight takes D5 is recommended by uh, by our silicon friend. But uh, yeah, what's the evaluation after that? Uh, uh, black losing. <laughs> Minus <laughs> one point nine seven thirty five ply. <laughs> <laughs> At least you could probably reduce the number of pawns he loses per move in the computer's verdict. Well, it's better than my one ply anyway, so carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Castles. Castles. Rook E1. Rook E8. And now we... Is this where the, the fireworks start? It is. Probably is black, black has got unstable pieces, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's got. No I mean, nothing. Points, nothing looks solid. The bishop on d six looks very, uh, you know, yeah, very, yeah. very just, just looks, uh, just looks awful. And uh, <laughs> well, the next, the next move is the start of the attack. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very good move. He just goes bishop g five. Lovely move. And the idea is that if you if you take this bishop, then white is going to take take and knight takes g5, and he's converging on f7 and h7 in this position. And the um, well, a possible sequel: queen e5, f4, check takes pawn takes knight b6. Yeah, that uh... <laughs> a bit of gratuitous uh, violence. So black goes queen a5 instead of taking it. And now we have the sensational move, rook, bishop e7, which I like a lot. Uh, it may it may not be the best, but we're we're gonna we're not we're not gonna go into the alternative. Bishop e seven. That's a tremendously imaginative move. Mm. Imagine the impact that has on your opponents. You know, shock <laughs> shock value. Well, he shouldn't have played the Volga gambit, should he? You know, what's wrong with the queen's gambit decline? <laughs> Bishop takes e seven. Rook takes e four. And I'm uh, I'm just going to manoeuvre this so so the the viewers can't quite see the end of the game. They might have they might have glimpsed it there. Bishop e7. Oh, they're going to glimpse it anyway. <laughs> Knight e5. Knight c7. Queen h5. I, I'm going to let I'm going to let you guide us through the rest of the game, Andrew. Because you picked it and it's such a fine finish, then. Uh... Thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'll finish it off if you like, you know. Queen h5, a move that should be in everyone's locker. Can be played at any time, in any position. <laughs> Even move two. <laughs> Preferably you've got a move two, yes, after e5. We must take a look at that in some future show. Uh, not as bad as it looks. <laughs> anyway, white's got a few threats here. <laughs> Black negates the threat for at least no moves. And look at this incredible move here. Queen takes F7 check. I mean, that, that should be in an art gallery, shouldn't it, Nigel? Oh, definitely. Look at this. Oh, poetry in motion. But not for Black. Well, there we are. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the finish to an amazing game but um, I mean overall I would say this variation the original Volga Gambit is, is difficult for Black um, you know I, I, I honestly think that, that Black is struggling here um, and this move E4 is just a very good reply Black takes this pawn White just develops the pieces doesn't worry about much else and then that 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 looks very very strong indeed yeah yeah really so i think uh, i think that more or less wraps it up doesn't it for today yeah i think it does and the uh uh yeah my apologies for the technical difficulties because for some reason zoom didn't want to connect to twitch this morning 
and I, I need to investigate why that was the case. And uh, well, the, 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 the video is going up on YouTube and hopefully on Twitch as, uh, as per usual. So, um, yeah, okay, till next time. So t uh, tomorrow, we're looking at the London system, aren't we? Um, yeah, tomorrow's the London system. I thought we'd have a two-part um, a two-part investigation. In the first part, what black answers D4 with D5, then white yeah. plays bishop F4, and in the second part, black plays knight F6 on with one, and then what to do after bishop F4 there. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, well, thanks, Nigel. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. And uh, um, thank you, everybody, for, for bearing with us. <laughs> we're old. We don't do technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, we have to now. So... Uh, <laughs> now. We'll see you tomorrow. The times. See you tomorrow yeah. at 10.30. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.